Some months are definitely ups and some months are definitely downs. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to Bundle Banter. Today we're looking at the February Humble Choice Bundle. Now you've got two games to drop out of the bundle instead of just the one game from last month. So people are freaking out just a little bit, but also uh, on the other side they're complaining that the games in the bundle aren't that great. So maybe it'll be easy to pick two to drop out. Anyways, let's take a look at the games. We've got Frostpunk. Pathfinder Kingmaker, Book of Demons, Cryofall, Okami HD, Eliza, Shenzhen IO, Project Warlock, The Hex, Warstone TD, which is, I guess, Warstone Tower Defense, Underhero, and Night Call. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the games, starting with Frostpunk. Frostpunk is an RTS survival game that makes nature into your enemy. You will be put through your paces, but it isn't quite as difficult as it seems once you have a proper strategy in place. Developing technology is fairly rigid and there isn't a ton in place to mix up the gameplay between sessions, but it's still fun to boot up and lord over my little band of survivors. The sound and design are excellent and I love thriving in the cold. The next one up is Pathfinder Kingmaker, an extremely decent combat RPG, all things considered. It is well written and enjoyable, the characters are interesting, and you really do get a lot of freedom when it comes to what sort of build you're going for. Uh, but the developers has placed a time limit on the main quest, which is probably why it's getting some, some flack. But I understand why they did that, because probably they want to prevent you from over grinding your characters, but shouldn't that be my choice as well? That's a bad decision, I'm gonna call that out, but overall it doesn't ruin the experience of Pathfinder for me personally. Book of Demons brings Diablo 2 to mind, but once you sit down and actually play it, it just makes you want to go play Diablo 2. Uh, it bills itself as a deck building roguelike, but the deck building part seems really really thin. You basically chug along on a rail, you have a little pathway while enemies are just free to assault you from wherever they please. The levels are far too long to really be truly enjoyable, and you have to go back and pick things up like gold or whatever, you have to go all the way back down your little railway path and all the way to the exit and it's it's really a slog. And by the time you're done slogging to the end boss you'll probably have had just about enough, if you even get that far. Probably if you're like me you'll you'll boot up Diablo 2 with a, within about 10 minutes of playing this. Definitely a game to consider kicking out of this bundle if you've got a drop too. Cryofall. If you like Rust PvP base building or RimWorld micromanagement, Cryofall is basically a good fit for you as it is a mix of those two. However, it is grindy. I'm talking about very, very grindy. Uh, maybe you can manage to fall in with a crew and succeed alongside them, but if you are a solo player, this is probably not a good game for you to pick up. Solo PvE is basically just going to be a grinding simulator in solo PvP, well, you're gonna get molly walloped by bands of Chinese and Russian players. That's just how that goes. That doesn't make it a bad game, it's just what this sort of genre attracts. Next up we have Okami, an absolute friggin' classic adventure game that has been re-released on, I believe, six or seven different platforms. And that's for a good reason. It has transcended generations because the visuals, the sound work, the story, even the enemies and the bosses, they all have unique mechanics and oh god, it's just so much fun to play. If you haven't played Okami yet, I am absolutely begging you to give it a shot. This is the highlight of the bundle as far as I'm concerned. I wrote it off initially as just weeb bait and I didn't give it the time of day for many years and I truly wish that I had experienced it when it was at the peak of its popularity because it is a better adventure game than The Legend of Zelda. You can fight me on that one. Uh, Eliza's the next one up. It is a visual novel. Generally not my favorite genre, but this one ends up doing okay with it. A visual novel about an AI-driven therapist. There isn't a ton of agency in this game. You'll basically be clicking through prompts, but the story is intriguing. It has great writing and voice acting, which is basically all that you can ask for in a visual novel. And if you enjoy a story that can make you think, this is the one. It's got themes of morality, therapy, AI, corporatism, and a whole lot more. Uh, I can't get too much into it because then I'll start dropping spoilers. 
but uh, do consider snagging Eliza this month. Shenzhen IO is our next game on the docket. You basically build logic circuits, play with electronics, fiddle with a ton of components like LCD screens, plugging them in, see what they do. It is a puzzle game, which I'm not generally very partial towards, but seeing as it has some sort of real world application, I sort of tilt in its favor just a bit more. So you can bash your brain endlessly into those puzzles, or you can do what I do and just kick back and relax in the sandbox mode. So if you enjoy logic and programming, then Shenzhen is definitely the highlight of this bundle for you. Project Warlock. I actually like this one a lot. An FPS with a gritty retro style. Fans of old school Doom or Wolfenstein are going to eat this one up. Features, spells, perks, a leveling system. Get ready to relive the glorious 90s. Definitely right up my alley. And it does have a demo. If you're unsure about it, head over to Steam, snag the demo. But in all likelihood, you're, you're going to like what you find. The Hex was one of the games that I excluded this month, primarily because I found it in a Fanatical bundle. I think it is still in that bundle on Fanatical if you want to go pick it up for a really, really low price. I didn't pay it much attention at first because the visual style isn't particularly pretty or anything like that. And then I read that it was from the creator of Pony Island, and I said, oh... Now it all makes sense, uh, because Pony Island is one wild freaking ride, and I think that the Hex offers an equal amount of that wildness. Basically, the story is you play as a group of retired video game characters, and then you flashback and relive their previous lives. So this game is many things. It is a platformer, a top-down shooter, a JRPG, and so much more, all rolled into one. That is a really, really cool concept for a game, so definitely give the Hex a try. The Hex is one of the highlights of this bundle, even if it is relatively unheard of. Warstone TD! We are getting into the home stretch. Uh, yeah, Warstone TD is basically just a, a, a tower defense game. It was recently in a bundle on Fanatical. I did pick it up. It looks decent, maybe even more than decent. It looks nice. And it plays well, but it doesn't do a whole lot to break the mold. It's just another generic tower defense as far as I'm concerned. Have you played Kingdom Rush? Okay, well, you've, you've basically played Warstone TD. Do you want more Kingdom Rush? Okay, maybe snag Warstone TD and it can scratch that itch, but it is definitely not a genre-defining game in any way. It kind of just does what it does, but it does it relatively well. Under Hero is the next game. So, do you like anti-heroes? We all do. Uh, this is a somewhat clunky side-scrolling RPG with timing-based combat. There's a lot in this game that could do with more polishing, such as the dialogue and the combat and the jumping. But somehow, despite all of these flaws, the game ends up pulling through by delivering on funny moments, telling a somewhat unique story, and going outside the box when it comes to combat. I did say the dialogue was lacking, and then I talked about the jokes. But uh, the dialogue is mostly lacking for some, like, obvious duh moments. Some very obvious things are stated, but that doesn't make me like the jokes any less. When they hit, they hit. If you're into Paper Mario, specifically the Thousand Year Door, I think that Under Hero can work its magic on you. Anyways, our final game is Night Call. It is another visual novel. This one is good. Not as good, I think, as Eliza. But it is also significantly more involved, which I guess isn't saying all that much for a visual novel. But at least you get to make some choices. In Night Call, you're a cab driver in Paris, and you basically have a special gift in that people like to talk to you. And some of these people that like to talk to you will spill some dirty little secrets. So you'll end up using those secrets to solve three different murder cases. It sounds good. <laughs> the gameplay is slightly repetitive. And the murder motivations are absolutely awful, <laughs> extremely generic, but there's just something about the art and the writing and the dialogue that just keeps me chugging along through the night in my little taxi and wanting to see what comes next. There's also a money aspect, but I'm not entirely convinced that you're actually able to run out of money in the game. I guess if you just sit and read the newspaper and listen to the radio all night, you'll run out of money, but as long as you're doing things then uh, the choices and things that you make don't don't have much of an effect on on anything. You'll get through the visual novel one way or the other. So let's see what the Dayton shows. 
basically everything except the Hex and Warstone, which I already got those two from Fanatical, so I'm not too worried about them in the Humble Choice this month. Uh, I, I did end up picking up Frostpunk, and it does have one DLC. I basically only picked it up for the DLC, which isn't even that good of a DLC, but I did re redeem it. If you want the actual Frostpunk game, then leave a comment, and I'll, I'll reach out to you. I'll get that to you one way or the other. As far as the strength of this bundle, there are some definite duds in here. I would not suggest that anybody go for Book of Demons. You could probably also drop Warstone, maybe even Nightcall, uh, depending on your tastes. Maybe even Eliza, depending on your tastes, if you like visual novels or, or not. But I definitely like kicking back with a game every once in a while that doesn't require me to do a whole lot. There's not a lot of thinking, you just absorb a story, so that's super nice. So yeah, those those three, four kind of losers, but Underhero, The Hex, Okami, Frostpunk, even Cryofall I think I could get into, and Project Warlock, maybe even Shenzhen Dot or Shenzhen IO. I think that game could help me out a lot with logical thinking and stuff, which is something that I tend to have a problem with. I don't think people are wrong in saying that this bundle is one of the weaker ones to come out of Humble in quite a while, because it's going up against things like the Spyro Remaster Trilogy, the Crash Bandicoot Remaster Trilogy, uh, Call of Duty World War, and those were all within the same month. So some, <laughs> some months are definitely ups and some months are definitely downs. This is sort of a down month, but there are some decent things in here. Definitely play Okami, definitely check out the Hex. Those are the two that you need to play. Under Hero also uh, has my eye, so I'll be giving that one a spin as soon as possible. Let me know what you guys like as far as your choices. Which games did you drop out of here? Which two or three aren't your cup of tea, as it were? I definitely appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so, so much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. That would be awesome. You could also hit that notification bell if it would please. Also, check out the links in the description. You can reach out to me on Twitter, Discord, Patreon. Big, big shout out to Nico the Legend for supporting us on Patreon currently. Anyways, friends, this has been the February Humble Choice Bundle. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed it. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye bye One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends